Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Sarah. I'm a junior doctor working near London and this is part two of prescribing. Before you watch this video, make sure you watch the first part which goes through the layout of the drug chart, um, common medications. In this video, we're gonna jump right in and go through some more medications. Stick around to the end of the video because the last part is going to be all about very common mistakes that doctors make when prescribing and it's things that you really want to avoid. Without further ado, let's get started. So now we get to analgesia and the most common analgesic you will prescribe is paracetamol. It's always stressful the first time you prescribe it and then you just get used to it and it's the most common um, drug you will probably prescribe. So the dose is going to be one gram. Uh, watch out for the dose because it's not always one gram. If they're over 50 kilograms, this is the dose. If they're under 50 kilograms, it's going to be based on their weight. So you would go for 500 milligrams. Um, the route is going to be oral or IV because if there's problems giving them orally, you want the nurses to have the option to give it IV. So make sure you always do this and that way you won't have to be called to re-prescribe it. Always put the date and for times you can give paracetamol four times a day um, and you want to give up to four grams maximum so for four times a day you want to split it out evenly and that comes around to 6 12 18 22 which is roughly split out obviously you don't want to put 24 because that's midnight and that's not very fair on the patient waking them up at that time um, so you split it roughly into four um, the start date which is going to be when you prescribed it new you want to put your GMC number and your signature and that's how you prescribe your paracetamol if there are no contraindications you may also prescribe an anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen and the dose for ibuprofen is 400 milligrams oral so you don't give this IV um, and again you've got the date up here and you can give this up to three times a day so again this will be 8 16 24 uh, 22 sorry again we're not waking up our patients at midnight um, if you're prescribing this around um, 3 p.m by the way you can cross off the first dose because obviously they can't give the morning dose since you're prescribing it for four o'clock um, so the way to cross off a dose is to just do this um, if you want to cancel uh, a medication you can just do this if you want medication to be reviewed after a few days you just do this and review and the nurses before prescribing it will speak to the doctor um, who's covering the patients and will get them to review the medication so those are just a few things that you can do um, if you want the medication to stop after a few days completely you do this to be super clear you can do this um, but yeah they'll stop it after a few days and again you'll put your GMC number signature start date new and there we are. With ibuprofen, make sure you always prescribe a PPI. So this is something like a meprazole, and you can give 20 or 40 milligrams. Uh, let's give 40 milligrams orally, and you can give that in the morning and in the evening. Again, you can cross off the dose if you don't want it. Uh, GMT number, signature, start dates. There we go. Um, this is pre-admission, so anything that they were on before they came into hospital, and if you're changing the dose of the medication or the time of the day, then you would just tick this. Um, and it's helpful to have uh, this so we can keep track of what's new and what's changed and what's old from admission. Opioids you tend to put in the PRN section unless the patient is in a lot of pain and is consistently asking for PRN. Um, and in that case, uh, you may review and then decide to put a dose in the regular so that you manage their pain accordingly. But start off in the PRN section. So a common one that you will be giving is codeine. And the dose for this can be between 30 and 60 milligrams uh, typically. So you might start off, you can always put a range. So let's say the patient um, is going to have some pain post-op. You can put 30 to 60 milligrams. Um, oral and this is going to be four times a day so four times a day is QDS so once a day is OD four times uh, two times a day is BD three times TDS and four times is QDS um, never put a range in frequency because that just leaves it open to interpretation you're not supposed to do that try and put a proper dose in if it's going to be dependent 
Um, you can put a range in the dose, but not in frequency. Dates, GMC number, and your signature, and whether it's new or pre-admission. Another very common um, analgesic is going to be Oromorph. Now this you will always be prescribing, um, Oromorph. And again, the dose can vary. If the patient is not really in pain, and this is a just-in case, then I would put 2.5 milligrams to 5 milligrams. Uh, this is oral, and this can be given as frequently as two hourly. Um, you can always put four hourly, depending. You can increase the dose to um, up to 20 milligrams, obviously not four hourly then. Common prescriptions you'll see are 2.5 to 5 milligrams, or 5 to 10, or even 5 to 20. GMC number, date, signature, and there you are. If you make any changes to the dose uh, or the frequency of the medication, always re-prescribe it. Don't just make changes on here. Uh, I suppose you can always add IV on a medication and then just sign next to it. But other than that, if you make any changes, rewrite the whole thing uh, because otherwise um, it won't be obvious how soon the patient started the new dose that you've prescribed. Finally, we get to VTE. So any patient that comes into hospital must have an assessment of their um, venous thromboembolism risk and once you fill in the section depending on this you will either start them on an anticoagulant or not and then fill in the section so it's quite straightforward this is the high risk section um, so if your patient has for example heart failure you'll just tick this or if they've got an acute or chronic disease which they often will have if they're in hospital um, or if they've had an operation um, this section very easily lots of patients have this filled in and then you've got the low risk, which is essentially none of the above. And also if they have bleeding risks, you want to um, consider these as well. And at the bottom, you would just sign and put your full name and whether or not that's been given. It's not usually filled in. Once you've done the VTE assessment, if you need to give um, anticoagulation to the patient, the most common one that's used is Delta Parin. And this is a very easy guide to follow based on the patient's weight. So let's say uh, your patient is 70 kilograms, this is the section that you'll go to, and they'll get 5,000 units daily. If they're over um, 100 kilograms, then you'll get 5,000 units twice a day, and under 50 kilograms, it, that's just half the dose once a day. So practically speaking, to fill this in, very straightforward, just go to the pharmacological VTE section, and here you write Delta Parin, they may be on other anticoagulant like a Pixaban or Rivaroxaban. Sometimes they come in already on a Pixaban because of AF, for example. So you'll see that most patients are on Deltaparin, but it can differ. So the way that you prescribe this is write your GMC number, signature, Deltaparin, dose is going to be 5,000 units. Always write units, never put U, because if you put U, that can be mistaken as a zero. So 5,000 units, subcut. And this is given in the evening, so you can put 18, so that's 6 p.m. Put your date, your start date, um, when you started the medication, new, and there we go. That's your anticoagulation. If you also want mechanical VTE, you can always put TEDS. Um, I can't remember if you write stockings or just TEDS, but there we are. Um, and here you just write one pair. And the route, I suppose, is going to be topical. And here, all you have to do is this. And that basically means that they just wear it all the time. And again, GMC number, new, and the start date. There we go. So there are some common mistakes that lots of doctors can make when prescribing. And some of them can be very serious, while others are more minor things. Um, and it's just important that you be aware of them so that hopefully you make as few as possible even when you're on a night shift and you only have a few brain cells working. So the number one mistake you don't want to make is not checking allergies. So this is incredibly important and it can be life-threatening if you miss it. So before you prescribe an antibiotic or any medication, always go to the front of the drug chart and make sure that you check what allergies the patients have. Even if you're on call and the day team has documented to give a certain antibiotic or to re-prescribe something, don't just blindlessly do it because that's going to be on you and it's your GMC number and it's your responsibility to keep the patient safe. So always check the allergies before prescribing anything. The easiest way not to miss this is for every single medication you prescribe, just make it a habit to look at the front of the sheet 
um, and just check for any allergies. On the same note, something else that you want to be aware of are contraindications. So for example, some medications are contraindicated if a patient has a very poor renal function or with certain conditions like asthma, there are certain um, medications that are contraindicated. So there are some common ones that you can literally Google so that you're familiar with them. And the other way to do it is just have the BNF on your phone. So whenever you prescribe a medication that you're not familiar with or that you don't know the contraindications of, just look for that medication and on there you will see um, side effects, contraindication, and it will literally list everything you need to be aware of. So a good practice when you're prescribing medication is to check the BNF and have a quick look through the patient's notes to look at their background so that you know what long-term conditions they have and their blood tests as well so that you know what their renal function is. Those are the three things you would typically check. Another thing that can be missed which isn't as serious is more to make your life easier. So it's standard practice that for every patient you make sure that they have uh, antiemetics, laxatives and some sort of analgesia, maybe even paracetamol in the PRN section. Make sure that the paracetamol is always written as oral slash IV and that way if a patient who's completely well starts to feel a bit nauseous or has not been able to open their bowels as regularly as usual or is in a little bit more pain than usual, the nurses instead of having to bleep you or the on-call will be able to just use that medication on the PRN charts and you will be surprised at how much time that saves you and your colleagues. So this isn't a mistake, but it's more a tip that a lot of doctors don't use and it's a shame because it makes your life a lot easier and it's good practice for your colleagues as well. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or would like a part two with more prescribing, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.